My Hero Academia is an incredibly popular anime show that's actually quite entertaining. And the premise is that everyone in this world has superpowers. Well, about 80% of the Earth's population does. And these superpowers are called quirks. And every single person has a completely different quirk. It's basically a world full of X-Men. So naturally, with these powers, some choose to become heroes, some choose to become villains, and most just get on with their day-to-day -day lives and don't really get involved. And this show follows a group of students as they are being trained to be the next generation of heroes at Hero School. So it's actually very like the X-Men in premise. And this video is going to look at some of the characters to decide which lands and cores they best belong in. Deku. Deku has wanted to be a hero pretty much from the day he was born. And he has spent his whole life studying heroes and villains so that he would one day be able to fight crime with the best of them. Even though he is one of the few people on this planet that does not actually have superpowers. But still, that didn't stop him from deciding to fight supervillains, even charging headfirst into a fight with a villain who'd captured his friend. Whereas the other heroes who have abilities were staying back. And Deku worked so hard that the greatest hero on earth, All Might himself, took notice of him and saw the potential that he had, and decided to give his own quirk to Deku. And Deku is not that good with All Might's incredible power. He can only actually use a small percentage of it safely, and whenever he uses the full power, he breaks his bones. The very first time he used it, he broke both his legs and one arm. And he has gone on to use the power so much that he has actually shattered all the bones in his arms. And he's been told that if he ever breaks his arms again, then he might never be able to move his arms again. But despite all this, he continues on in his struggle to be a hero. And even more impressive than this, throughout his whole childhood, he was ridiculed by his classmates and supposed friends for wanting to be a hero when he didn't have a quirk. They mocked his hard work and laughed at him for trying to be a hero without powers. And yet he never once faltered and never once gave up on his dream. Now, some might argue that this counts as great hope, and they would have a point because this is a lot of hope. But the hard work and effort that was joined with this hope means that he can only be in the Green Lantern Corps of willpower. There is literally no other choice for him. Anyone who can work this hard and push himself this far needs an insane amount of willpower. And it's without a doubt his most dominant emotion. So the Green Lantern Corps is definitely the one that suits him best. All for one. Now, All for One is not only a powerful supervillain with no morals, he not only has an army of superpowered criminals who will do whatever he says, and he not only has pretty much every superpower that you can think of, but he can also take away a person's quirk permanently. Now, losing your superpowers is something that terrifies everyone with superpowers. But in this universe, it's even worse. Normally, not everyone has abilities. But everyone in this world, or at least nearly everyone, has a quirk. And those without them are looked down upon by pretty much all of society. They're mocked and ridiculed by their peers, and even the nice ones will just end up pitying them. Which is exactly what happened to the powerless Deku growing up. And that's why losing your quirk in this universe is even more scary. Because if All For One takes it, you are lesser than almost everyone on the planet. At least in most worlds, if you lost powers, you could fit in with all the non-powered ones. But in this one, it's so much more difficult. I mean, to put it in perspective for us, it's kind of like having your legs cut off in our world. Yeah, you can still lead a full life, but obviously you don't have legs. So All For One inspires fear in every sense of the word. He is a dangerous supervillain who wouldn't hesitate to kill you or hurt you in messed up ways. And he can take away your quirk whenever he likes and cripple you for life, taking away the one thing that makes you amazing. And he is so powerful that no one can actually stop him, not even All Might really, who is essentially the strongest hero in the world, and yet he nearly died just getting All For One arrested. So an average person would have no chance against him. So if All For One doesn't belong in the Fear Lands and Corps, then I don't know who does. Bakugo. If you had to describe this person, the first word that you would use is angry. He is loud, violent, and belligerent. Even when he won the sports festival, he was furious, acting so angry and crazy that he had to be chained up in order to accept his medal. He had just won an important sports festival, an achievement wanted around the world by millions. This is an incredibly important moment in his life. And yet all he cared about was that his last fight wasn't good enough. So he screamed and raved like a maniac throughout the whole of the award presentation. All he does on a daily basis is scowl and yell at people who talk to him. 
he snaps everyone about anything and everything, and he is just basically angry. There's no two ways about it. He belongs in the Red Lantern Corps of Rage. He doesn't really have any character other than the fact that he's angry at everyone. And this needs no more justification. I mean, if you doubt what I'm saying, then just watch any episode where Bakugo features and you'll see his anger is the first, last, and only real emotion that he ever shows. All Might All Might is literally the symbol of peace for this universe. He is the ultimate hero. The standard by which all other heroes are judged and that all other heroes aspire to be. He inspires the whole world to be a better person, all of which means he's absolutely perfect for the Hope Lantern Corps. I mean, he's basically a textbook definition of what the members of the Hope Lantern Corps should be. Not only does he inspire all those around him, but he actually never gave up hope on what he wanted to achieve as a child and that he could make the world a better place. He wasn't actually born with a quirk and yet he still dedicated his life to being a symbol of peace to help the world be a better place. So much so that the former holder of the All For One Super Quirk decided to give him her power because she believed in him that much. And there's not much more that needs to be said on this. All Might just belongs in the Hope Lantern Corps, pure and simple. Uraka. When it comes to heroes, willpower is always a strong contender. After all, you can't do what heroes do without having great willpower. And Uraka certainly is determined to become a hero. But if we look at her motivations for becoming a hero in the first place, her lantern core becomes clear. She is becoming a hero to get rich. Yes, she wants to help people, but really she's in it for the money. Which is fair enough. I mean, in this universe, it is a job. It's basically the same as being a celebrity and becoming a millionaire. And at the end of the day, we all have jobs to earn money, so who can blame her? At least she has one that's going to help people. So you might think that avarice makes sense for her, as monetary gain is one of her main motivations. But that changes when we look at the reason that she wants the money. She wants it so that she can support and provide for her family. And despite what some people might say to you, money is very important in life and we do need it. If you don't believe me, go and try and buy some food without money and see what happens. So although she wants money, she wants it because of the love that she feels for her family. And love is a lantern court that makes the most sense for her. Not only is she driven by her love for her family, but she is of course very much in love with Deku. It's not been discussed that much in the show, but it has been made very clear that she has very strong feelings for him. In fact, the way she acts towards him at times is a bit like a love-obsessed stalker. And in a normal show, that would be a cause for alarm. But in an anime, that's actually kind of how love interests have a tendency to act. Animes love doing this thing for a bit of comedy. But even if she was a love-obsessed stalker, then that would still kind of work for the Violet Lantern Corps because that's exactly how most of the members act once they get their power rings. For some reason, the Love Lantern Corps has a tendency to affect their minds. I guess love is a temperamental beast after all. But no matter how you look at it, I think you'll agree that the Violet Lantern Corps matches her personality and her dominant emotions. Yes, one could argue that willpower makes sense for her, and it is possible, as she is a very willful person, and she is pushing herself towards a very hard to achieve goal. But even this is motivated by love, as she still just wants to become a hero to get money so she can help her family. So really, there's no other option than the Love Lantern Corps. And that is the Lantern Corps of five characters from My Hero Academia. Do you agree with my choices? Or would you put these characters in different Lantern Corps altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with any other anime shows that you'd like me to do a Lantern Corps video of in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible, by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.